All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new day. Uh, right, good morning, good to see you all. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, yes, could one of us please lead us in prayer? Mangi, if you're there, do you mind leading us? Yes, Pastor. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We uh, we pray, Father, as we learn about uh, market price, uh, place ministry, Lord, that you you'll enable us, Lord, to understand, Lord, and to to be attentive, Lord, and also pray, Father, that you. You'll empower your Holy, Holy Spirit will empower Pastor Paul as, as he teaches, Lord, so that he may teach in the way that we we will understand. We pray all this in your mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mangi. Okay, uh, so yesterday we started off with chapter eight. Uh, we looked at people, processes, performance, and rewards, uh, and how in an organization, it's very important to remember that the organization uh, or the ministry, it's its about people, right? Uh, if there's no people, there's no ministry. If there's no people, there's no organization, right? So people is what makes the organization work. And so we looked at a few points like, you know, pay, fa pay fairly uh, based on contribution, ensure that your people, your employees are paid on time. Uh, now, uh, many of us may not be, uh, you know, uh, we may not have our own business or uh, we may not have our own ministry, but even in the things that we do in our daily life uh, as, as team leaders or managers, uh, if there are if there is, uh, you know, certain things under your control where you have to make payments to vendors, make sure that they are made on the right time. Uh, not to hold back wages, not to exploit people. Uh, I did give you examples yesterday on how, you know, many times in ministry we we ask people or we ask these companies to come and, uh, you know, uh, set up the stage and uh, set up sound system. And then after the whole event, they say, you know, now uh, we cannot pay you this much. Uh, this was, it's too difficult. Now that is the wrong thing to do. Uh, make sure that what you have promised uh, what has been decided would be paid to the vendors. Uh, then another very important point in uh, about organization, about people, is to hire the right people. Uh, you know, there will be times, especially especially in ministry, uh, we need to find out the motive as to why people want to join ministry. Well, there there can be plenty of motives, right? Some sometimes people like to be called. Uh, you know, pastor or, uh, you know, worship leader, or they like to, uh, you know, just think of ministry as something that is, you know, we can do whatever we want, however we want, you know, we don't have to go to office. So there are many reasons why people want to join ministry. So when you hire, uh, I'm, I'm just translating it into ministry, uh, hire the right people. So also in the corporate sector, uh, you know, you, we may have people with excellent knowledge, excellent in their work, but if their character and their attitude towards work is wrong, uh, uh, then it's going to affect the whole team. So, uh, of course, yesterday we also talked about warning, right? Uh, never threaten or abuse, but warn your uh, team members. There'll be, you know, like at APC, we have the three strike policy. Uh, you make a mistake, uh, right? Uh, and it's a crucial mistake. You get one warning, then you get a second warning, and then there's a third strike. Uh, you'll be out of the organization. So give people warnings. Right uh, Now, uh, you may be a team leader or the cell group leader in your church. Uh, there will be people who will, you know, try to cause confusion or, uh, you know, there will be people in, in the cell group who may want to always be uh, in the front line. They want to be known. They want to always be talking. Uh, so you, you as, as leaders, we need to 
you know, get the wisdom, ask God for wisdom to handle these kind of people because we don't want to hurt them, but we also don't want to disrupt the entire meeting, right? And so you, you will also learn more next year in discipleship in small groups. You'll learn about that as well. Uh, and very important, empower people to high performance, right? Uh, and your team, uh, and even if you are part of a team, empower yourself, empower your team members for high performance, right? Uh, one of the things that we always do um, in, in terms of, uh, I'm just going to give this example, right? In terms of uh, APC worship, uh, uh, our worship ministry, we always, always look to get better and better and better. It's not like, okay, we, we, we have this team. Okay, we've done this. Okay, so that's enough. No, it's always this feeling of wanting to do better. Even right now, uh, as the whole worship team, many of us are writing songs. Uh, we are uh, coming up with songs, melodies, you know, because we want to just get better and better, excellent in what we're doing. And then we stopped at this. Uh, remember that sweetness of the lips increases learning. Right now, if you have somebody and you tell them, uh, you know, uh, in a harsh way, you tell them, you know, you don't know how to do this. How come you, you know, you've been here for five years? Why, why would you know this? You should have done this before. Uh, now, that would be the wrong way to handle the situation. The Bible teaches us that sweetness of the lips increases learning. So, uh, you know, you may be having people in your team who are ten years in the ministry. But they may falter in, you know, in small things. Uh, remember that sweetness of the lips. Encourage them, teach them, uh, and, and tell them, hey, uh, you know, we can do this together. Uh, yeah, it's okay to fail. It's okay to fall. Uh, the Bible assures us that the Lord Jesus is with us. His Holy Spirit is with us. He will empower us. So sweetness of the lips definitely increases learning. Because, so for example, if I join a team whether it's ministry or a corporate uh, sector if i join a team and i in the initial days itself i have a team leader or a manager who's only shouting and you know who's always you know uh, in stress and putting out all that stress on his team uh, i wouldn't want to be in that place i would rather uh, you know, look out for another job with lesser pay or uh, than to look, tend to be in a place where there's constant, uh, you know, uh, tormenting or this constant, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, discouragement being put on us. So remember, sweetness of the li lips increases learning. Uh, uh, and this is something that we can implement even in our families. Uh, you know, many times the Lord has taught me how to deal with my children. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, we get upset, we say something. So then I realized that, hey, I shouldn't have said it that way. There are better ways to say it. And, and, and so the Bible continues to teach us. And these principles, the, the reason it says timeless principles is because they transcend time. They transcend place and uh, it can be used in every area of our lives. Right. So if any of us are not in the corporate sector or we, you know, we're finding it difficult, just implement these, translate these principles into your own life. Right. Uh, don't say don't feel that, OK, I don't have a, uh, you know, a business or I'm not in the ministry yet. I still haven't started. It's all right. Translate these principles. Let it soak into you. And then eventually when you start off, uh, you know, all these principles will come into your mind. The Holy Spirit will remind you, you can use it. Right. So we'll continue from where we stopped. Uh, uh, we are on, let me just share the page we are in. Yeah, we are on page 71. Uh, one standard for all and show no partiality. I'm on that point. Right. So in an organization, uh, have no partiality. One standard for all of them, right? Uh, let's read uh, Proverbs chapter 24, 23 to 25. Proverbs 24, 23 to 25. Yes, one of us can please read. Uh, Proverbs 24, 23 to 25. These things also belongs to the wise, 
it is good it is it is not good to sow posterity in judgment he who says to the wicked you are righteous him the people will curse nations will abhor him but those who rebuke the wicked will have delight and a good blessing will come upon them amen man and I, i'll also read uh, proverbs 28 21 to show partiality is not good because for a piece of bread a man will transgress you know there's so much of wisdom in this book of proverbs uh I I think the book of proverbs deals with every single aspect of our you know of our daily lives every single thing right and here it talks about don't show partiality uh now especially in an organization it's very easy for us to show partiality it's very easy uh you know if you are a team leader or a boss uh and you have people under you working under you it is very easy to show partiality right now the bible teaches us don't show partiality especially if you have people who are you know uh, very good in their work right they're excellent they're always performing high performers and then you got somebody who's average right um and i've seen this happen in the corporate sector where you know this high performing guy he he can just apply for 5 6 days leave and it gets approved <laughs> but this guy who's maybe average uh the team says no you have to come you can't take 5 days uh but the same rules apply for both the reason why this one's <clears throat> leaves are approved because he's a high performer now that would be very 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 wrong as employers we have to treat our team members equally right with fairness what you do for this person has to apply the same for the other person now in ministry also uh you know uh, for example you're a, a cell group leader and in the cell group you have somebody who's 30 years in the ministry and uh and then you've got somebody who's just 2 years in the ministry or 2 years no he knows the lord uh there should not be a difference in the way you see them both so in your in our mind we should tell ourselves we should remind ourselves okay they both are same in the eyes of the lord right? of course their skills and talents are different the rewards i mean their their performance all of that is going to be different but but the rules and the guidelines apply to both of them equally right if the cell group starts at 10 o'clock just an example right 10 o'clock and you expect everyone to come at 10 o'clock and say for example or not if not a cell group say a meeting starts at 10 and you expect everyone to be there by 9:55 and this guy he's a top performer and he comes at 10:30 and you say okay it's all right just come and sit and you don't and if we don't you know uh, talk to him later and tell him why uh, he has to be on time then that is partiality right the bible is strictly against partiality the lord jesus when he when he chose his people he showed no partiality but right? he loved all of us he loves even now he loves all of us the same way whether we know the entire bible or not it does not matter right he shows no partiality he is not going to say okay this guy this person is a pastor for 30 years so i love him more no uh, you know he shows no partiality right so as as people as believers we must do the same right uh, just because somebody james writes it so wonderfully just because somebody is rich and they come into the church and then uh, don't don't you know do extra things for them just because they are rich and you know that they can uh, you know sow into god's kingdom no just be normal right just, just be normal uh, uh in manglo also we have this very very rich person he's a he's a builder and he's, he's very rich he's very famous all across uh, the city of manglo uh, and he comes to our church i made it a point to make sure that i don't have this extra care for him people come after church for prayer he if he wants prayer he has to stand in line uh, he has to wait his turn just because he comes in a know bmw or whatever it doesn't mean that he gets to come first and pray and go no uh, all of us are equal right so sh- keep those standards right right uh, next one listen to all sides of the story 
uh, now here's a very, very important uh, point for us as leaders. Uh, uh, and every point, I'm going to translate both from the workplace and in the ministry so it can help all of us, right? Uh, Proverbs 18, 17. The first one to plead his cause seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him. Now, conflicts will happen. Wherever there's people working, conflicts will happen, right, in an organization. There will be differences, right? The way I think of certain things and the way somebody else thinks of certain things will be different, right? Now, we must, as leaders, learn the discipline of hearing both sides of the story because we if you know sometimes as leaders we don't have time right uh, there's these petty squabbles and silly fights that happen we don't have time we just listen to one side of the story and we say okay okay let's move on let's just you know make this all right just resolve this and let's move on with the more important things to do but sometimes in that urgency we forget to listen to both sides of the story and we may end up hurting the other person, right? So as leaders, always hear both sides of the story. Now, how do we you know, deal with this in ministry, right? Uh, we have to deal with it in the right way. We need to make them both sit and hear both sides of the story, or you can separately sit with them. And I remember this um, uh, elderly couple in our church, right? Uh, they are retired, their children are all gone abroad, and they came to church and now in our church we have a few you know uh, uh, families who have small children and the children keep running about and you know, sometimes they scream and we can't help it right they're children but these two this couple got really upset and they they said they uh, they came to me and said what is this you know they are always disturbing and all of that uh and then i felt bad for this family this couple because the girl the little girl maybe three four years old they're unable to control her because because it's you know uh, it's hard. Uh, but then I, I I did speak to them, but it became a big problem later on. I realized that this couple and their children were not coming to church for a long time, and I asked them what happened. They said this family was very upset with us, and they you know uh, shouted at us, meaning they just got upset and they said, "Why can't you control your child? Why is she making so much of noise and all of that?" Now that really. Uh, I realized that, hey, I should have dealt with that problem initially itself. I didn't know it's going to escalate so much. So I went and I spoke to them and had to hear their side of the story. And they were feeling bad. You know, the child is disrupting the service. And and this family, they are not used to children. They are used to, you know, quietness. <laughs> they, their children are all grown up and they're probably grandparents now, but uh, they're used to quietness the whole day. So they're not used to children moving about. So I had to, I had to come up with a solution. So I said, I told this family, let it not stop you from coming to church. We will make a place where, you know, where you can sit. That you know, even if the baby, the child cries, you can just you know, quickly step out of the church for a while. Uh, and then I had to speak to this family and tell them, see, I, I understand that you know you're retired, you're uh, you're not used to this, you're used to quietness, but you can't help. Children are like this. Uh, you know, children uh, nowadays they don't go out every day, and so when they come out, they get excited. So, uh, so that should not stop. You know, so so we had to resolve, listen to both sides of the stories. Both of them had a legitimate concern. Right? The older couple is saying, we want to come worship the Lord, but every time they're screaming and shouting. Right? So, but I, but this family, you know, wanted to come to church, but this is the problem. So always listen to both sides of the story and make sure that it, when you resolve a conflict, both sides are, uh, you know, somewhat you know, satisfied to do, do our best to somewhat make them, you know, all right. Uh, the next point, to settle a dispute, quiet the quarrelsome one. Proverbs 26, 21. A quarrelsome person in a dispute is like kerosene thrown on a fire. I like the message translation. The message translation always, you know, it, it, it brings it to life. Uh, it brings the words so much meaning and it relates so much to us. Imagine there's a fire and when there's, there's a small fire and you have a troublesome, quarrelsome person, you throw kerosene on it, the fire is just going to burst up, right? So if you find somebody that way in your team, um, 
and uh, you know, and I'm not just talking about corporate. I'm talking even about ministry. There are people who can scream and shout, um, and you know, cause a ruckus. Uh, so the best thing to do is take this person aside, let him calm down, uh, and then speak to him. Right? Because if he's there in that place, it's only going to cause problems. Right? And uh, and at a, I remember many many years back, there was this one man who was always had an issue. Uh, and he started to shout and you know uh, uh, cause of trouble, and we had to actually you know tell him to come outside the church and stand, and we had to speak to him and tell him why you know. Uh, the reason was he was going through his own challenges, his own personal challenges. He was stressed out. So he was putting all of that stress upon this other, uh, you know, the people in the church and uh, it had to be dealt with. So get the person out first and then resolve the conflict, right? Now, when you're resolving a conflict, use the power of a gentle response. Let's read Proverbs chapter 15 and verse one, Proverbs 15, verse one, yes. Proverbs 15 and verse one, any one of us? Is anyone's there uh, on Proverbs 15, 21? Sorry, Proverbs 15 and verse one. Agreed. Um, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And thank you, Samuel. Now, this is not something that is only for the corporate or only for ministry. You can also apply it in our lives. Soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. How many times, you know, they got this heated, tensed moment of conflict and we can either do two things. We can either get upset and go back to the same tone that they are speaking in, or you can give us, you can, you know, speak gently and peacefully to resolve that matter. Now, a gentle response will definitely change the minds of the other person, right? Uh, especially when they are verbally there are verbal attacks, they're aggressive, they're agitated, they're rude, and they're just lashing out everything that they've been having in their minds. That's the best time to either stay, to stay calm, to keep quiet, let their anger just pass away, or respond gently. Now, by responding gently, you will eventually bring every tension, every, you know, uh, this agitation, everything will come down and then you can resolve uh, and discuss the matter, right? And, and now, as leaders, we must ensure that we don't lose our temper and we don't get upset and say, you know, uh, how can you talk to me like that? Do you know who I am? All of that is not required, right? Gentle response. Now, sometimes maybe in the uh, at home you've got uh, you know a, a heated moment. Uh, just stay calm, stay quiet, say okay, let it go, and then later on you can you know try and resolve the problem or or even during that time use the power of a gentle response, right? Uh, and and it's really really powerful. Next point: keep gossip and strife out of your work environment. Uh, I'll read uh, Proverbs 26 and 20. When you run out of wood, the fire goes out. When the gossip ends, the quarrel dies. Right? When you run out of wood, the fire goes out. When the gossip ends, the quarrel dies. You know, we've, we've all heard of this word, right? Office politics. Uh, and we start gossiping. We start talking about, okay, what this person did, what that person did. Do you know what happened to his family? Or do you know what happened in his workplace? Do you know behind somebody's back, that's gossip, right? Uh, and 
and when we start begin to gossip, when we begin to uh, have strife in the work environment, it's going to affect the overall work, the overall performance of the team. Now, in in places of ministry, we're not saying that there's no gossip. There is enough of gossip, but we need to make every effort to teach our members, our, our you know, as leaders, to teach them what what happens when we gossip. Well, how it affects us, how it affects our team, and how it's wrong in the eyes of God. So, uh, so as as team leaders or people in ministry, or uh, you know, make sure you have a pulse of what's happening in your team, right? Um, especially when when the ministry is small or your team is small, it's all right. You know what's happening. But as the team grows, as the church grows, keep an eye as to what's happening, right? Uh, and and it's not like you're you know you're tracking them and seeing what uh, you know, but it's just that you're you're making sure that things are happening. And if there is gossip strife, you 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 bring them out, you teach them, you correct them, you empower them, you ask them to continue. Right? Uh, but I believe that uh, it all goes back to teaching, uh, teaching your your team members uh, through the scriptures why it's wrong. Uh, to to gossip, to strife, to have strife, right? And when we do that, uh, you know, slowly things will begin to change. Now you may be wondering, as one person in a team of maybe thirty people, how can I alone change it? Now I'm not saying that it's going to change overnight, but there are certain principles. When you stand by it, maybe at least two, three people will say, "Hey, one thing I know is this person." It's not going to gossip about others, so there's no point of talking about anything to this person. So, uh, Proverbs 17 one says, "Better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife." Right? Uh, better is a dry morsel uh, with quietness, uh, just little with some quietness, than house full of feasting with strife. Stay away from it. Uh, if 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 you're in a team in the corporate sector, and you got strife and people are gossiping and you know it, uh, and and if you feel that it's gone out of control, just stay away from it. If people gossip, they come and tell you things. Just say, hey, um, I prefer not to talk about it. It's all right. They may think that you know uh, we, we we are weird or um, you know it's all right. They say, hey, I prefer not to talk about it. Uh, there are many times when uh, uh, when I was working in the corporate sector, there were, there were, you know, we would all sit together and eat. Now, I just became a believer. I was so much wanting to, you know, learn the word and grow in the word. And sometimes these team members, we would all sit together and they would start talking and, you know, talking about the other team and the other manager. I hope I was there. I hope I was here. This company is like this. Now they're receiving a salary from the company. Uh, uh, yet they, you know, they kept cursing the company or, you know, saying things about uh, people. And you know, many times I just got up and walked out of that place. And, you know, they came and asked me, what happened? Why did you say, I wanted some peace during the break i don't know because the whole time we are talking i wanted some peace so i just gave up. but they they understood that it was not for that it was just that they kept talking and gossiping and so as leaders and team members stay away from it right it it just eats us up uh, gossip and strife is not going to do anything uh, in our, uh, to the other person but it's only going to eat us up same as for unforgiveness it's just going to, uh, you know, cause trouble in our own life than for others. So stay away from it, right? And and if you feel that you're you have the power uh, in some way to change things as a leader, have team meetings, get them together, tell them. Well, well you know, uh, in a corporate sector, you may not be able to bring out Bible references, or Bible truths, but you can surely bring out the effects of uh, gossip and how it's going to affect the team overall and uh, you know and that way uh, uh, gossip and strife can slowly be taken away from the company now last point show troublemakers the door uh, proverbs 22 10 
cast out the scoffer and contention will leave yes strife and reproach will cease now underperforming employees uh, or employees who are causing internal problems right it's never an easy task now in the corporate sector itself it's very difficult to you know sometimes it's easy for some managers to just show people the door uh, but in a ministry setting it's very very difficult as leaders how can i combine grace yet combine uh, this whole thing of scriptures where you cast out the scoffer contention will leave but always remember we looked at this before itself the team should supersede the individual now for example you you have, we, you have a church or a ministry and this one person is going on causing trouble right and you give him a warning and then you say to him again uh, you know maybe two warnings three warnings and this constant trouble making is going on it's affecting the entire team right uh, or it's affecting the entire ministry there will be a time when you will have to show troublemakers the door now it's i'm very sad to say this but there are times in the church uh, i have asked you know after giving a lot of warnings maybe two three warnings uh, i've escalated it to our senior pastor and we had to show people the door we had to tell them please you know we love you we care about you but uh you will not be able to uh, you know uh, as a church we want to protect our church even though we are small and we're growing so we request you to kindly uh, look out for another church and uh, not in a harsh way but in a very kind way request you to leave the church look out for another church where you can feel comfortable uh, and we were we very with a very gentle way we yet stern uh, gentle yet stern uh, we put the message across and they, they had to leave uh, it is very sad uh, because you know it's it's very hard to let go of people but then the church or the ministry or the team should supersede that individual uh, and so in ministry if it has to be done it has to be done right uh, yes Taisha, you have a question you raised your hand hi pastor hi everyone well i was just um relating to the situation that that um that you talked about um sometimes you gotta show a person to door and that is so true i encountered that early in my ministry maybe about three years ago i started off uh, we were on a season of we're in a season of purr and the fasting and so we had a group at the time and two young mm -hmm. ladies in particular i think they were demon possessed that's just my you know honestly i think they were um they joined and said they wanted to come and pray but they disrupt the group they call people at certain hours 12 midnight and some of them have their husbands and all of that and that's not looking too good you know and they just disrupt the group they weren't about poor they had a, a spread of confusion they were like that young girl in acts that they the devil sent them to just disrupt it was so horrible so you know i had to say listen i really had to kick them out the group block them yes and you know tell them listen this ain't gonna work no as you say show them the door so i was just sharing that i experienced that you know early in my ministry yeah yeah sure yeah thank you Taisha, for sharing that yes there, there will be these challenging times uh, showing people the door it's not really easy uh but very important is to do it in a gentle manner they may respond very harshly or you know they may take it in the wrong way they may say you know uh, your ministry will go nowhere you are nothing and all of those things so don't worry about all that right uh, you're doing what is important to protect your ministry so right uh, anybody have any thoughts any questions uh, we complete chapter eight uh, any thoughts any questions uh, anybody has faced 
office politics and how did you deal with it? Uh, anyone would like to share? Uh, or maybe even in the church or in the corporate sector. Uh, okay, Christopher says, please give us examples of troublemaking in the ministry. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, sure, Christopher. Uh, there, are, there are plenty uh, of ways people can cause trouble, uh, Christopher. Uh, uh, like, for example, um, uh, you know, there will be sometimes people don't like uh, this contemporary worship, right? Uh, I'm just giving one example, right? Well, uh, they don't like contemporary worship. They want to sing hymns, right? Uh, they say, okay, hymns are the ones we should sing, uh, you know. And so what happens is they are discontent. And so every week they they begin to, you know, probably tell other people in the church, you know, the worship team is not so good. They should start singing hymns. They should uh, avoid all of these contemporary worship. It's all uh, cultic worship, uh, you know. And so what happens? Uh, they are putting seeds into people's hearts and the others will say, oh, okay. Uh, you know, they start sending links uh, or, uh, you know, uh, start sharing about podcasts and all these things. And then slowly we realize that, you know, the entire, maybe a group of 10, 15 people are all of a sudden raising their voice and saying, we don't like the worship. How did it start off? Initially, they were okay with it. But then how did it start off? with these two people. So if you dig down deep, uh, you ask questions, you talk, you uh, you ask questions, discuss with the people, you will find out who the real troublemakers are. Uh, and so that is one. Then you have people in ministry who will, uh, you know, especially dealing with money as well. Uh, you know, there are times when people will put in wrong bills. Uh, they'll start claiming for wrong, uh, for things which they didn't even have expenses for. Uh, and then it becomes a habit, uh, and then it, you know, they begin to maybe share it with other people in the team. The others as well do it. Now these are troublemaking things. Uh, yeah, and Paul, also, sorry, in, in the book of Revelations, uh, uh, you know, one of the, I think you are doing Revelations as well this year. Uh, one of the churches, uh, they were troublemakers, right? Uh, and and they were causing strife, they were causing trouble within the church. Uh, so yeah, Christopher, there are there are plenty, plenty of ways people, it can be as simple as, you know, uh, a song which people sing, worship song. It could be as simple as, you know, uh, like what I mentioned, uh, uh, causing trouble because children are making sound, uh, make too much noise in the church. So, uh, so of course you give warnings, you give, uh, maybe one or two warnings and then if you don't see a change if they don't take the suggestions that are given if they don't take the advice in a right way uh, then we have to show them the door yeah Christopher uh, you, would you want more examples yeah there's plenty when as you uh, is that okay uh, Christopher Do you, would you like more examples have another question yeah go ahead i'm just uh, typing it out okay i think uh somebody else also raised their hands was that rupa i'm sorry i didn't see that i think was it rupa who raised her hand okay okay christopher's another question in ministry, is it a practice to do reference checks? Uh, okay, so the Bible teaches us, as we looked at the point there, you know, always look at both sides of the story, right? Uh, so when you mean reference checks, uh, meaning like to check with people uh, about, uh, you're talking about hiring people while hiring people, you, you usually they do, okay, for recruitment, okay. Uh, now, I would answer this this way, right? Uh, now, if there's somebody who is in the church, say, for example, uh, you know, uh, you've been in this church for five years, you're serving in the church for five years, uh, and the, the the church knows you, the pastoral team knows you, you know, you've been, you everyone see you, for example, sound and setup team, right? So everyone know you, right? You've been serving 
five odd years, three to five years, and uh, you've been serving faithfully. And now all of a sudden, this young man wants to join the, you know, wants to, there's a you know, opening for uh, a certain role in the church. And it's in line with what he's doing. Say, for example, HR. Uh, and so if he, if he wants to apply for the job. Now, as a main, say, for example, I, uh, I'm the, I'm, I'm there, I'm in the recruiting process. Now I've seen this person for five years, right? Serving in the sound and setup team faithfully. So I wouldn't want to do any reference check on him, right? Because he has served faithfully in the church. We have seen him Sunday after Sunday, uh, you know, for all our meetings, for all our programs, he's there, he's serving. I wouldn't want to do any reference check, right? Now, if there is somebody who goes online to our website and says, okay, no, there's an opening HR uh, and he applies for it, right? And say he is maybe one year in our church, right? Uh, but we haven't, we don't really know, right? Whether he has can come every week or uh, it's just one year in the church. So what I would do is I would consider him, uh, but I will also find out details about him, right? I would find out what what is his understanding uh, now if this is with Christopher I'm just talking in terms of um, recruiting and ministry would you want for the workplace as well no, just for ministry, for ministry? okay okay so so for example yeah so this person is maybe one year uh, and we haven't seen him much in the church Right. But he suddenly he comes and says, I'm part of your church. I want to apply for this position. Uh, now, I would want to know more details about him. Right? What is his uh, understanding? What is his, uh, you know, uh, now he may have the qualifications to be a HR manager, whatever. Uh, he may have 10 years odd experience. So that's good. In the, in the area of his work, that's all right. But I also, since it's ministry, I need to check what's his you know uh, understanding of the scriptures what's his uh, you know character like uh, how is he going to uh, is he going to be in line with the vision of the team so uh, if not a reference check what i would do is i would you know put them in a probation kind of a period maybe give them 6 months see how they are see how they work maybe keep somebody senior uh, to just uh, you know help him out to uh, you know walk him through certain processes and see and in maybe six months make a decision uh, you know for all you know he may be a very quiet person just wanting to do his job and go home so uh, but then there's this other times when there are people who are coming from different ministries or just people from different places uh, they're not part of uh, your church and they apply i would definitely do reference check yes i would i would ask them to send their pastor's details their and uh you know their whichever team they've served in a letter from the pastor saying that you are part of this church you have served in this church yes i would definitely do a reference check uh, yeah right any other questions any other thoughts Welcome, Christopher. I think Rupa had raised her hand. I'm sorry, I'm not sure if she's here on the call. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts? Uh, those who are in the corporate or those who are in the, uh, you know, leadership role. Any of the challenges? I know we've got about four minutes left. So, uh, any of the challenges? Uh, Tarun's been with us for many years. So Tarun, you have any thoughts? Any Anything that uh, you would like to share? Samuel, any thoughts? Um, <laughs> so a few, few thoughts, Pastor. Um, thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity. Um, so uh, this prophet, that uh, I've been on for uh, for a year now, uh, which is about um, which is about uh, around I think conflict resolution, but it's more to do with 
uh, creating a space for everyone to say what they are feeling, what they are thinking, like an intentional space. Because when you normally tell people, like, does anyone have any thoughts? Uh, you don't get many volunteers, but there will be in the room, there'll be people uh, wanting to say something, but, you know, you're not sure, should I say, should I not say? And uh, that's, I think, a normal culture, especially, um, I don't know, but in, in Sikkim, we are... Uh, we are a very conflict avoiding um, society where you know if i if even if i don't like something someone uh, i will never bring that up i would rather go and talk behind back and let other people know that i'm not happy uh, i'm not happy with the company but never in in a forum where uh, where i'm supposed to bring the tensions out um so Creating a culture, creating that safe space uh, intentionally uh, by, saying, uh, I think, you know, by a few techniques, but you know, things like um, small groups um, going in rounds. Um, uh, that's that that has been um, that that's been quite a game changer where uh, there is intentional practice put behind. Uh, listening to each and every one, giving people a space to voice out however they're feeling, whether it's good or bad, uh, suspending judgment um, and things like that. Um, so, so yeah, just uh, I got reminded of all of that uh, when you were sharing about gossip. Like I, I felt like you know, uh, gossips happen a lot. If, like even good people, uh, you know, uh, I think integrity issues are something that is rare. Like where people steals money from the company. Uh, or, or does something it's it's it, it it it's not that it doesn't happen but it's not so frequent but gossip is something that's very common and even even um good natured very integral people uh trustworthy people end up uh say essentially they're not gossiping but it's just that because they've not been given that platform to express uh, say uh, they end up saying it outside the room or to someone else, and that often comes across as um, gossiping or uh, you know backbiting or saying negative things. But um, but when when a company takes that uh, intentional space to create, problems, I think uh, it makes a difference. So that that's something that I wanted to share. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Sam. Yeah, very true. Uh, especially introverts, they they may be going through very difficult time in their office. They just won't speak out. Uh, and we'll learn more in the next chapter, work, workplace relationships and how, you know, uh, as leaders, as managers, we need to develop an environment, like what Samuel was saying, an open space where people are free to talk about what challenges they're going through. And so next chapter, uh, next week, chapter nine, workplace relationships, we look at, you know, how we can maintain love, maintain openness, and, uh, you know, how we need to be sensitive to others' feelings, uh, cheer up people, uh, avoid, you know, how we can avoid, uh, you know, causing strife in work race, uh, workplace relationships. So, uh, yes, we will talk about that next week. Uh, Kennedy, talk about retirement in ministry. Any guidance? Is it okay if we can take your question up next week, please? It's 9.50 now. So uh, you guys have to go to the next class. Uh, so we'll take that question up next week. Uh, yeah, thanks, Kennedy. All right, let's close in prayer. Uh, maybe one of us can uh, close in prayer for us. Uh, Abhinas, do you think you can do that for us, please? Yes, sure, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful time and the moment that you have given us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for your words, for your teaching, Father God, that you have provided and resources, Father God, that you have given us, Lord Jesus. Father God, as we are learning for the marketing place, Father God, help us to learn more and more, Father God, so that we will not fall or stumble, Father God, but we will recognize and realize, Father God, what is right and what is true, what is what is wrong, Father God, and what's your words, is, Father God, and help us to, Father God, to Walk in your word, Father God, Lord Jesus. We're submitting this time and, and all the classes into your mighty hand, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Abhinas. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great week ahead. I'll see you next Monday. God bless. God bless.